but I believe that God will give us utterance. What is the righteousness of God means that we claim righteousness of God. Have we all have we really become the righteousness? Or God doesn't want us to be in Christ. And that's all. He doesn't want us to sit. You know, you know, uh, here's the blueprint called thoughts. You know, uh, it says the thoughts that I have for you is of good, not of evil. So I believe, I believe the first form that we are the righteousness of God, not uh, in the processing and in the handling. Please, can we address this part? Or uh, I want to address this to start with it. Okay. okay, hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Actually, any meat see my husband speak first, I always find it difficult to because <laughs> this man is a high priest. So uh, I'm just learning. <laughs> I don't I don't understand. So that's what I mean. <laughs> God will really help me. Amen. God will really help me. Actually, I, I would like us to know this, that uh, nothing God is doing in us outside Christ. Amen. Everything God is working in us is in Christ. Amen. That is why all the promises of God are in Christ. Yea and amen. amen. Nothing is done. Nothing God is doing outside Christ. That's why Christ is actually a word on his own. And that is why nothing is really done. So when you, everything we will come into or we will become or we will inherit, they are already in Christ. That is why Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we must know where this blessing is. Amen. This blessing is in Christ, not Amen. in us. Amen. 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 Now that which God has finished in Christ, Amen. God is taking from there to make us. Amen. Mm. You know, there's a scripture, you know, why me and Pastor Israel, while we are talking earlier today, there's a scripture I would like us to start with, which is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I will read from verse 20, although my emphasis is on 21. Verse 20 says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Verse 21. For he had made him to be seen for us. Who knew no sin? Now look at the last phrase. That we might be made. Look at the word. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Amen. That we might be made. We will not be made. So he who knew no sin was made sin so that we can be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. So we are to be made the righteousness of God Amen. in him. Amen. And I would like to say it, when we are talking about making, mm. making actually consists of two things. Mm. Making consists of creation and formation. So if a man is created and he is not formed, he has not been made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. You know, like I said earlier on, nothing we are to become outside him. Everything we are to become 
they are already in him. Amen. It is in Christ God fulfill all the promise. Yeah. Amen. It is in Christ God finish the work. Amen. It is in Christ God accomplish the mission. Amen. So in Christ, it is in Christ we are being made. Amen. Not outside Christ. That is why 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, 31, he said, Christ is made for us. Look at the word. Yes. He is made for made us for righteousness. Us. Christ is not made for God righteousness. Amen. Did you get that? Amen. Christ is the righteousness of God. But unto us, he is made, God made him because of us. Amen. I don't know if you get my point. Yeah, yeah. Now, Christ is not made to God, God's righteousness, because Christ is the righteousness of God. Amen. So unto man, he was made to us, God's righteousness. And when we are talking about the righteousness of God, we are actually talking about the will of God. Amen. Yes. Because nothing is righteous before God outside his will. Amen. The only thing God needs to be righteous is his will. Amen. Because anything that can pass away cannot be the righteousness of God. Amen. That's why the Bible told us that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Right. Because meat and drink, can, can it will pass away. Amen. So the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So the righteousness is in the whole the kingdom, which is the which is righteousness, is in Christ. Amen. And the Bible says, Christ has been made unto us. Mm. The righteousness of God, it simply means God made him to us, his Amen. righteousness. In other words, if we want to please God, we want to walk in God's righteousness, the person God will show to us is Amen. Christ. Amen. Is the person called Christ. So outside Christ, there is no righteousness. Now, I really want to focus on that word, made. Amen. You know, for example, it's just like when you finish making a thing, like mm -hmm. a potter, you know, mm -hmm. a potter, when a potter wants to make a clay, he first of all make one mm. as a pattern that he will follow to make others. Amen. So when Amen. he makes, that is, look at the process the potter will go through, we have to go through just to make that pattern. So when he made the pattern, Every other clay he's making to to must be according to that pattern. So that is why the pattern song is Christ. Amen. The pattern that God had raised is Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is the pattern song, is the righteousness of God. Amen. Jesus is made unto us. The righteousness of God. So God has made him to be the pattern. Amen. So anyone that will not look like him cannot be acceptable. Amen. Cannot be acceptable. Now, who is this person God made to become the righteousness? He is a man that was made he, both in his spirit, in his soul, in his body, he is made righteousness. Amen. So you can't be born again. You are born again in your spirit and automatically you are. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you understand what I'm trying to say. For mm -hmm. us to be made the righteousness of God, we must follow the step of the pattern song. We must be made and the making consists of both creation and formation. So a man that has not been made and the pattern by which one can be made, it must be according to the pattern. That's why you hear 
when God was talking to Moses on the mountain, was he on the mountain? He told Moses, he said, make sure you build this tabernacle according to the pattern shown to you. Amen. Amen. So that pattern is actually Christ. Amen. And the tabernacle God was telling Moses to build according to the pattern are the people. Because tabernacle, the building of the tabernacle, because the tabernacle of God is with man. Amen. So God was telling Moses that this measurement I gave to you that you want to use to build physical tabernacle, make sure you build it according to the pattern shown to you. It simply means the pattern that was shown to Moses, the, 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 the pattern is already set. So it was from the pattern God was revealing to Moses that this thing you want to build must be according to pattern. Now look at it. When God told Moses to build it according to pattern, Moses started making the tabernacle. He started making the tabernacle. He started building the tabernacle. So mm -hmm. the Bible says, after Moses finished building the tabernacle, the glory of God descended. Mm -hmm. God came to rest mm -hmm. on that tabernacle. God came. That was mm -hmm. when Moses finished it. Know what if Moses had stopped on the way? If Moses had stopped on the way and said, After all, I have gotten the measurement, I don't need to finish it. The glory of God will not rest. Now, you know, Pastor Sophie, you asked a question about why are the people not being matured. Now, look at this after the tabernacle was made mm -hmm. and the glory of God rested, the Bible said the priest could not minister because it was so strong. The priest. Yes, the priest could not minister because of the glory of God that rested upon the tabernacle. The truth of the matter is that when a believer is fully made, mm. when a believer is fully made, he mm -hmm. will not need a fivefold minister to minister to him yes. anymore. Yes. Amen. Yeah. When a believer is fully made, has been mm. fully made the righteousness of God, no pastors can minister to that believer. Yes, so God said to Moses, immediately Moses finished the building of the tabernacle, the Bible said the glory of God rested and the priests in the tabernacle, they could not minister. Amen. They could not minister. Mm. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I have uh, the Spirit of God is telling me to God bless you for what you just said. Uh, the Spirit of God is put in my heart. So, um, he told me to stay in the position of questioning. But he told me to say some, to minister what I ministered yesterday to address uh, some uh, Chunks that people are programming their mind, amen, which is not of God, and you want them to walk on this thing. Amen. Genesis 1, we all got to know that verse 27. Uh, if you check Genesis 1, 26 and 27, God said, let us create, let us make man. In our image. All of us. So, now, uh, for God to make man, it involved the three of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, in 27, then God started the his own path. Then God created. That is his own path. Because he knew that it takes the world to form. And uh, the spirit to commission. So, but the idea is let us Create, let us make the three of us let man. Us make man. Mm. But 
the Bible didn't say that then God made man. The Bible said then God yes, created. Yes. My whole position is to bring forth. Let me bring forth man. And he brought man from himself. Because God is the carrier, is the resources for everything. That's the first part. Then in chapter 2, come on, if you check the whole Genesis chapter 1, you will think that everything he created the sea, he created the animal, he created the fullness of things in the waters. He created the sky, he divided, you know, the uh, uh, filaments, the upper one from the lower one, you know, those, well, those things have deeper understanding of each of them, you know. Then, he created animals to you. So it's like the way God sees things. What it means to create is like the only thing God sees, God sees the spiritual part, even till now. The only thing God sees, the eyes of God only sees the spiritual part. So when he created man, or he created all the things before he created man, you will see as if everything was in place. The sea was in place. The animal was in place. The sea, the, uh, the, 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 the beds of the hair, the, 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 the fishes in the water, even the water, everything. On it. But when we get to chapter 2, <laughs> when we go to chapter 2, God said there was no man. He's not even, he said, he said, these are the generation of the heavens and they have when they were created. He said, and uh, in the day that the Lord God made the heart and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the house, before it was in the house, and every um, head of the field before it grew, for the Lord God has not called it to rain upon the earth. And also there was no man. Now chapter 2 is saying that everything that God has created, everything that was that has already appeared inside of God, in chapter 2, there was nothing. Mm, it has oh. not appeared. It has not appeared. Man. But the way God sees things, he sees, the Bible says God is spirit. So everything, there's a word called spirit. There's a realm. Yes. Called, that's what the Bible calls yes. the realm of the spirit. Amen. So in that realm, what uh, even the state of man, you can see, you can see Genesis one. God created man, and He created both of them, and He now brought them together, and He started blessing them, be be fruitful, increase, multiply, and have dominion. Amen. You know, it's like it's like it's like um, it's like Joseph that brought his two sons, Manasseh and uh, Ephraim, to himself, and started blessing them. Amen. You know, so God blessed. God brought the man and the woman to himself in front of them, in front of him and side blessing them. But we got to chapter two, there was no man. How come? So now if any man is in Christ, you know, in that Christ, that man is <laughs> is, is created the way God sees that man in Christ is, is in spiritual form. So it is the spirit part of that man that God sees. That man appears as a physical being to God in the heart. Mm -hmm. The heart is the realm of the spirit. The realm of the, the whole realm of the spirit for, for God, for man to, for man in the soul to assess that realm. He has to assess it through his heart. Praise the Lord. So, that is number one. Now, number two, in the heart, there was no man. The same man that was 100% active that God brought to himself and started blessing, we got to chapter 2, there was no man. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, after that time, he said there was no man uh, and the plant of the field for the Lord God has not called it's to rain upon the hearts. What is this rain all about? 
We skipped it last time, but I think we are going to skip it again today. Let's go. Let's just go the two for that. Seven. Seven. Was no man, not a man, to till the ground. Even what is the meaning of tilling? Another thing we have to understand is that the way Bible uses his word, it is not the same way dictionary uses it. The way there is a, there is a deeper meaning. There, there is a definition of every word you see in the Bible. There is a there is a spiritual understanding to all these words that dictionary will never tell us. Dictionary will explain it in a general understanding. You know, but this is the way. What is what, what does it mean to till the ground? What does rain mean? What does the what, what does ground mean? So now in chapter in chapter two verse uh, verse nine. Okay, verse seven. And the Lord God. So we have to understand the Lord God. Because that is a God created. But what about the Lord God? Who is he, who, who is he referring to as the Lord God? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord God. So let us make man. But God has done his part. Praise the Lord. So the word Lord God, anytime you see the word Lord God in your Bible, it's talking about the word, the word of God. It takes the word of God to form man. Now, let me tell you, if you are in Christ Jesus, the way God is looking at all of us in Christ Jesus is in the spiritual realm. But in that kingdom, it's not all of us that has been formed. Until we are formed, we cannot appear in the kingdom of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Until we are formed, mm -hmm. we are not yet appearing. Mm -hmm. Because all the blessings, all the spiritual blessings that are available in the garden, praise the Lord, Amen. or in the spiritual realm, Amen. there was no single man to till that spiritual blessing. I know God will give us understanding. I don't Amen. want to, because of time. Amen. To till. And, and when you are tilling, <laughs> it involves rain. It involves rain. We, we, have, we have to open it a bit, but I, I know that maybe next one we are going to, I, I'm believing God for uh, the direction, the topic of that, of a particular teaching that would make us to open up what the Spirit of God is saying. So, many of God, that's why the Bible says that uh, not everyone who comes with Lord, Lord, will enter my kingdom. So, there is a kingdom, you know, in Christ, there is a king, is it in there is not everybody that comes to the Lord that will enter into the, my kingdom, into the kingdom of God, but only those who do. And the purpose why God formed is for us to do. So the Lord God formed the man of the dust. So we have to also understand what dust is all about. Of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils the bread of life. That was when now man has become a living soul. When he became a living soul, he was able to be. He was. I mean, he was. He was able to be conscious of everything around him. Amen. So many of us are in the kingdom. Sorry, we are in Christ, but we have not yet yet entered into the kingdom because we have not been formed. And you can see the Bible says in verse fifteen, he said, "And the Lord God took the man." And put him into the garden to dress and to keep. Amen. That is the man he has formed. Now I have formed you. The Lord God, as in the word of God, has formed you. Now we have formed you, you you will be formed. Because let's say the word of God is a person, is a carrier. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. So, this word also is a person. Is a person that was with God. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says he sent his word. So, this word also can be sent. Amen. Because he's a person. It's like you sent somebody in an herald. So, he's a person. So, he sent his word. Praise the Lord. Amen. When he sent his word, this word now went ahead to heal 
cause of all our destruction. That healing is deep. It's not healing. It's not physical healing of disease. Amen. It's the healing of the soul. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. There are three levels of there are three levels. There are three layers in the tabernacle of God. The, the word of God, if you put it in the house, court, it will work for you. If you say to God that the Lord will supply my needs according to riches only no, no, through Christ Jesus. If you use it in other courts, God will list it. God will use it. Because according to your understanding. But when you get to the Holy Court, you know that the same verse has deeper meaning. Amen. And when you get to the Holy of Holy, you know that this word has deeper meaning. Amen. You know, the same God is supply. We still supply, of course. Because that is what you can understand. In that first day, yeah, it will still supply. If you use it as God, you want you to supply new cars or supply new houses or increase my business. Of course, he will use it. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to understand that before I stop is that in that past, when we have not yet appeared, all of us are done. We can we can use the name of Jesus in that position. We can use the name of Jesus. Jesus has become one with the world that has been seated. We can use that name against the principality and the we, but. Don't forget, you have not become that name. That's right. Amen. That's right. You've not been formed. You know, and they have not given the opportunity to, to dress the garden and to keep the garden. Amen. But in that position where you are still in the realm of the spirit, you can claim that you are the righteousness. No, you don't understand. You have not even walked on the path of righteousness. You've not used the word of righteousness for people of the strong means. Amen. You've not started breaking bones of the world. For people that, that when Jesus broke the bones, he carried the cross and he went on the cross and he died. Amen. That, was, that, that was what it means to break the bones of the world. <laughs> that is what breaking of the bones means. Amen. You know? The strong meat, that is what strong meat is not, you know, Pomo is different from uh, <laughs> Shaki. <laughs> the, 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 the thick one. Yeah, some Pomo that you have to chew it. <laughs> it will eventually remove it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are we getting it? So, you've not been formed. It was when you will be formed that they will now, uh, it is when uh, 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 they, that they will now, they will now put you in the garden so that you can respond to the trees. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, and Bible says, it's not everyone that calls me Lord, Lord, will enter into my kingdom. These people can use the word of, they can use the name of Jesus to cast out demons. They can have anointing. They can have branches. They can have one million branches around the world. Praise the Lord. But have they yet been formed? As God put them, have they have they, have, have they got to the level that they have entered into the kingdom of God? This is the kingdom of God in the kingdom of life. Praise the Lord. So, number one is we have a lot of Christians that are claiming righteousness and they have. I was telling Pastor Daniel when I was, when we were talking earlier, I said when I was growing up, uh, my Christian name is Israel. And I got to know about this thing when I was in primary school. I can't, you know, children, you cannot forget some sins. I can't forget that. And, but later I started passing through a lot of challenges without understanding why. And I started asking God, what is, what is happening to me? What is wrong? What have I done wrong? And because the challenge was so much. And the Spirit of God was telling me, do you understand your name? I said, my name? Israel. Israel, go and check the covenant that God has with Israel. That in the whole Middle East, that's the very that's the most smallest country in the whole that environment. Now, the covenant that God has with that that that, country, that small country is that even forget about all the surrounding uh, countries, you know. Let's talk about the whole countries of the world. If they want to fight that small country, they cannot overcome that small country. As small as tiny that country. That's number one. 
the there is what they call the tribe of Israel, and we know the blessings that are attached. I mean spiritual blessings. So now, if God calls you the righteousness of God, what do you understand by that name? So, one thing about your name is that he has to do when they, are, when they call you Israel, all your being will attach and we answer the person directly. Attach. There is an attachment of your being with your name, Amen. which you have to understand. So, if God calls you righteousness, what do you understand by that righteousness? What does righteousness mean? Amen. So, I want to place this as a question. Pastor Daniel, please, can you help us to answer that? Amen. Uh, you want me to talk? Uh, 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 the, the question is, what's the question again? The, the righteousness of God okay. is a name. Yeah. And is also what a do we understand by that word, what the righteousness? righteousness of God means. And how can we stop claiming what yeah. we don't even understand? Can we uh, actually... Righteousness. Actually, um, the word righteousness is not the language of man. Uh, and it's so important that um, we know it on time. Amen. That is why even the scripture says it is revealed. Mm -hmm. It is revealed. We don't know what is righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, please. Take note of this. On earth, there is nothing righteous except the substances of God. Amen. The only thing that is righteous is God. Anything that is of God is righteous. Now, I want to say something very important. Anything that we pass away is not righteous. Mm. God can never pass away. Amen. God is not corruptible. God is incorruptible. So righteousness is incorruptible. Amen. Now, it is righteousness that gave birth to us. The Bible says we are, it says being born again, not of the corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible seed. Amen. Actually, righteousness is actually the seed of God. Mm. So, Amen. righteousness is the revelation of who God is, the standards of God. Amen. There is who God is. That anytime He's coming with that revelation, He is revealing His righteousness. Amen. Now, it's very important for me to see this because there are some things we need to say in this regard that is key. If God had not revealed himself, nobody is righteous. What makes us righteous is the revelation of God that we have. That we walk upon. Amen. Please take note of this. That we respond to. If God had not revealed himself, none of us is righteous. Romans 1 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, for it is the what? Power of God unto salvation. That means inside the gospel is both power and salvation. Amen. It now says, for inside is the righteousness of God revealed. Amen. Amen. It is revealed. Now, according to Ephesians chapter 1 that you read, if your eyes of understanding is not enlightened, you cannot see the righteousness of God. Amen. You will only hewn your own way of yes. your standard. Amen. You will carve out how you think God should be pleased. Amen. No man can please God. It is only God that will tell you how he can be pleased. Amen. So when God is coming with the ways of how to please him, that is actually what righteousness is. Amen. I come again. Amen. To reveal the righteousness of God. 
Now, if you go to Isaiah chapter 11, the Bible mentioned the seven spirits. It says a rod shall spring forth out of the stem of Jesse. Yes, mm. And a branch shall grow from its root. And now begin to say, and the spirit of the Lord shall be upon him. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit of might and counsel. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And it shall make him quick in what in understanding the righteousness of god amen we need quick understanding to discern the standards of god to perceive the standard because god is a spirit how can flesh see his standard so they need to give us spirits the seven spirit of god need to reveal to us the spirit who is god Amen. God is the righteousness. So they need the spirit of wisdom and revelation to open our eyes. They need the spirit of counsel and might to help us, to give us strength. They need the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God to reveal to us the standards of God. Now listen, when God is revealing his standard, one thing is sure. Everything about your standard will be going down. Mm. <laughs> I like that. Say this. When God Amen. is appearing in a man, one of the signs that God is appearing in a man, the man will no longer live by himself anymore. It will be dying. Chapter 11, let's see what the seven spirit will do. Now, the seven spirit is not for showmanship. The essence of the seven spirit is to come and kill us. Amen. See Isaiah 11. <laughs> Isaiah 11. Let's quickly see that. Because I hear people talk about the seven spirit. Once you become, uh, you have the seven spirit, you can rule nations, you can govern nations. Actually, when the seven spirit is at work in you, you won't desire to <laughs> occupy any office on earth. Yeah. All the offices on earth will be too low. They will be too low to for you. The things of this world. Can you imagine Jesus Christ coming to be the president of the United States of America? In Iran. It's a demotion. When he was Iran. When he was on earth, they were begging him, come and be a king. He ran away. Ran away. <laughs> you know why? What he is carrying is far advanced. Listen. The righteousness of God is more advanced than any portion on the earth. Amen. It's far better. And that's why we need to know what we are carrying. You see, this thing that God has given to us is a blessing. Now see what the seven spirit we do. Isaiah chapter 11. Now see this. Verse 5. From verse 1, he told us the seven spirit. What do we do? Now see verse 5, and righteousness, from verse 4, verse 4 says, But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. For he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, that is righteousness. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Now listen, what we slay the wicked is actually, I will talk about that before we round up this evening. Very I'll just summarize it. Now see verse 5. And righteousness shall be the schedule of his loin, and faithfulness the schedule of his reign. Now see this. When righteousness is at work, see verse 6. The wolf also, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the king, and the calf and the young lion and the fatlings together, and a little child shall lead them. In other words, when righteousness is at work, we will no longer harm each other. He's talking about souls. Some souls are leopard. Some souls are hyena. Some souls are very wicked things. Now, that brings me to imagination. Mm. When you hear imagination, when you hear, because imagination is actually the third 
level of authority in the kingdom of Satan. Mm. You can't just mm. handle the imagination. You need to start with thoughts. Yes. Is it there in Second uh, Corinthians chapter 10? Yes, in that verse uh, 3, right. 4, and 5, right, yeah. we need to first and foremost begin to address thoughts. Amen. How Satan capture men is by thoughts. Amen. Thoughts is actually the prince of Satan. He's a prince. When you hear principality, is a spirit because the principles of Satan are carried out. Amen. That's the principal. Mm -hmm. So when you hear thought, it is Satan casting his principles on men. Now, it is that thought is the lowest realm. The spirits mm -hmm. that control thoughts. Let me tell you the truth. Uh, scientists discover that an average of 23,000 thoughts crosses an average man every day. <laughs> 23,000 thoughts. 23,000 thoughts. Now, if you are not strong in the Lord, you will trap at least 20,000 of it. <laughs> the bad one. When you trap 20,000 thoughts and you trade with it, it becomes a way. Amen. When you start walking in a way, that is where image is formed. Amen. That's why we have image formation. That is what they call imagination. Imagination is not what people envision. No. Imagination is actually an image that has been formed. Mm. When an image is formed, it becomes imagination. Now, when a man arrives at imagination, it takes the mercy of God to deliver that man. Amen. Because what you are dealing with is an image. Yeah. Image that has been formed. Then, when you cross the level of imagination, you come to the realm of what? Stronghold. Mm. Amen. Stronghold is equivalent to wicked spirits in high places. Amen. You know what Ephesians chapter 6 says? Mm. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principality. Those are spirits Pastor, that churn out thoughts. Yes, sir. I want to quickly. That, that's why you are is the last question I want to ask. But I want to ask yes, you sir. this. Uh, that's chapter Ephesians 6 from, let me say, from 2 Corinthians 10, where casting down imagination and everything started from. And heading up in Ephesians 6, um, where verse 12 they say, uh, for our struggle is not flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Hmm. I want to ask you that these rulers, authorities, powers, and uh, spiritual forces, are they <laughs> in the heavenly places like like heavens, like you always see heavens at the sky. Or are they within us in our soul? Please, can you address that place, sir? Uh, uh, because you can it's see people, very good. Because you can see people praying, I command you, you evil forces in the high place. Please, can we just address that place so that we can? Actually, to make it very simple, mm -hmm. the heaven, the sea, and the land, they are inside us. When Satan captured the earth from Adam, one of the things he fought to capture was the air, which is our soul. Do you know how God made man? Spirit, air, and land. Heaven, mm. air, and land. 
So Satan war to capture the air is in their soul. It's inside the soul of man. So where Satan is wanting to completely reign is in our soul. Amen. God bless you, sir. Why he is not having the free course to reign is because there is contention. Amen. Man is a complex being. The way God made man, man is complex. Very complex. He can submit to Satan today. Tomorrow we will run back to God. Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. Tomorrow we run away from God and run to Satan and say, Satan, please give me, give me that thing, give me that thing, give me that thing. Satan will say, if I give you, will you serve me? He say, yes, I will serve you. If Satan give him, he will turn away from Satan. So Satan don't know man. Satan do not trust man and God do not trust man. Trust man, yes. What <laughs> do not trust in man is own thing. And that is why it is very difficult when I see pastors say they trust. You are not the owner. You are not their owner. They can turn away from you tomorrow. Okay. Only trust God. Okay. And that's why put the things of God inside them and leave them alone to their owner. So God do not trust man. Satan do not trust man. What is God looking for in man? They are his things, his things. When God is coming to a man, what he's looking for is his things. So why am I saying this? This is what I'm saying based on the question you asked. The soul is so large that it can, the whole heavens can be in the soul. The whole earth can be in the soul. And the soul will not be satisfied. Huh. Jesus. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man? That he gained the whole world, oh, world. and loses. Now, Satan can give a man the whole United States of America. Just tell the man, give me your soul. You can have all. Mm. Many people that are selling their soul to Satan, one of the questions I tell them when I meet a ritualist, maybe they come for deliverance, I tell them, when Satan was telling you, I will give you the Lagos State governor position. Why not ask Satan? You be the governor of Lagos State. <laughs> you know that Satan do not desire those positions. Mm. They are not useful to him. Satan, I want to drive the best car in the world. Take my soul. It's because you don't know. Satan don't need car. Mm. He can't. He doesn't drive. He doesn't need all those things. He used them to trap men. Amen. Why am I saying this? Our soul is so valuable. The only thing that can satisfy the soul of man is God. Amen. It's cross. So yes, principality God. God powers. God is cross. <laughs> rulers of the darkness of this world. They are the ones that are watching over imaginations. Amen. Mm, deep ones. So when you see somebody imagining some venting, it's not ordinary. There are Rulers that are watching over it so that that person will not be delivered. So, a minister that wants to deliver that person, he needs to hold the word of righteousness, Amen. the sword of the spirit. Amen. What is the sword used for? You want to use the sword to kill that Amen. spirit. Amen. That ruler that is in charge of. Controlling that man's mind. You have to use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of righteousness, to kill. Hallelujah. <laughs> God bless you. You said, Yeah, yeah, no, I'm pointing to you. I'm coming. There's a scripture. Wait, wait. Wait. I want, is, I want you to say something. And I want you to say it together with what you're about to say. Right now, Satan went to God to ask for authority to tamper with Job in the book of Job. Please, uh, can you tell us people that?
that are praying against principality and power and hurting them to cast fire and telling them to die by fire. Please, are they praying ignorantly without knowing what they are praying for? Are they praying against their soul? <laughs> Uh, the truth is, uh, the church lost it in a great way. There are a lot of things that we have lost that we need to consider a lot. A lot of things. Now, please take note of this. Very, very important. You don't cast out wicked spirits. Yes. You, you can't even see them. <laughs> <laughs> your, when your eyes is open and you see the spirits that are called principality, <laughs> you will lie down flat. No weapon of man, no weapon of man can handle those spirits. Mm. Please take note of that. No weapon of man can handle those spirits. Mm. Mm. I want to say something. You need to see this. How many of you know that COVID-19 is a release of a spirit? Just yes. a tiny thing. Yes. He says <laughs> it's a scientist in China, in Wuhan, that produces it. It's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> the spirit. No physical weapon can handle them. Mm. And that's why that's if why. you have not been exposed so the word of righteousness, they will only be playing drum on your head. <laughs> Have you seen people that sing song and says, "Macha macha mo macha macha," Satan don't fall for God. Macha macha. <laughs> you will macha macha macha. You will be laughing. Match me, match me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the next day, you will try their neck. Now to really handle spirits. You need the weapon of our warfare that is not canal. There is a weapon of warfare that is canal. But the weapon of our warfare is not canal because we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. We are wrestling. It is a wrestling. What is wrestling? Those things you want to kill. They are inside of you. Yeah, no yeah, wrestling yeah. is a physical combat. You'll be fighting. So it simply means the habits, the nature, mm. those images, they are inside of you. Amen. So you take the sword of the spirit. Who are you using it to kill? Yes. Are you using it to kill the spirit? No. no. You will take that sword and kill yourself. Mm. Oh, party, kind of. And that's why yeah, the sword of the spirit it's not for external use. It is for you. <laughs> yes. Is it the that. word of righteousness? Is the word of righteousness is not what you use to kill anybody outside. The enemy is within. <laughs> so you use it for yourself. You must be dying daily. Amen. The more you are dying, the more those enemies, which are spirits, are being overcome. Amen. So a child cannot fight this battle. Please take note. I'm sorry. I appreciate God for those prayers we pray ignorantly because our eyes are not open. So those spirits will just be sleeping. When you are shouting, Holy Ghost, fire. fire. By the way, Holy Ghost, fire is not to be used for the enemy. The Bible says we baptize me with the Holy Ghost and with fire, not for enemy. I am the one that will be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Ah! It is an ignorant statement when you make such words. I'm Amen. sorry for saying this. Uh, it's just that this platform is to correct some of the things that we have hold on to. It has become an image. It has become a stronghold. I just hear the Lord says, mm. I am cleansing mine. I am, I am dealing with territories Amen. that are in the minds of men. Amen. I am pulling down vain imaginations. Amen. Things that have been established for ages. Amen. I am handling them. I'm taking over them. Amen. I'm taking over them. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat>
Amen. Pastor Justin, please, can you say what you wanted to say initially? I, I, I just wanted to drop a scripture. What's the scripture? That's uh, Jeremiah 1. Okay. Jeremiah 1. Yes. Psalm 2. That's Jeremiah 1. Then verse 9, but my emphasis is just 10. It says, Then the Lord put forth his hands and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Verse 10, it now says, See, I have said this. See, I have said this. I have this day said thee over the nations Amen. and over the kingdoms. Amen. Now look at it. Amen. Number one. To root out, Amen. to pull down, yeah. and to destroy, Amen. and to throw down. To build and to plant. To root out, to pull down, and to destroy, mm. and to throw down. To build mm. and to plant. Amen. So I'm, not, I'm just trying to use this scripture to portray that um, Second Corinthians chapter 3. And verse six, chapter six. That all those things are not anything external, but mm. eternal. And in, in Psalm chapter 2, the Bible says, Why do the hidden rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. That is the realm of imagination. It says, The kings of the earth and the rulers, the same four enemies. Oh. So all these are stages of our warfare. So, sir, do, 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 do you see what we just said, sir? Amen. Yes, sir. And if you check very well, the Bible now says, Jesus learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Amen. He learned obedience. So, Amen. obedience can be taught. Mm -hmm. Amen. Please take note of this. The book of Psalm, David was believing God for entrance into the inheritance. He was desiring God so much. In Psalm 1, he spoke of what he desired. By the time he arrived at Psalm 16, he was praying that thou will show me the path of life. Amen. David was praying, show me the path of life. Do you know what? By the time he got to Psalm 23, he have seen the path. That's right. Amen. Psalm 23 now says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He now said, no, yeah, no, I walk through the valley. So now he's not a walker. He has found the path. He says, he leads me in the path of righteousness. He leads me. He has found the path. But in Psalm 16, he was praying that thou will show me the path of life. Mm. But in Psalm 23, he has found the path. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. By the time you are getting to Psalm, by, by the time you are moving on to the, pre, the other Psalm, you discover that he has found rest. Because when you begin to walk in the path of righteousness, you will completely found rest. Amen. So I want you to. Pastor, as you, you were talk, yeah, as you were talking about, you know, like wrestling, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood and against principalities, and, and it is within you. And I, I was just um, receiving that, you know, you've got some people, you know, currently struggling. So can you pray for them? I know that, like you said, it is within us, it is within the soul, but as the Lord has put his words in your mouth. I believe that when you speak it, there will be an entrance that will be like a light and it's going to be the beginning of a path. So that's what I'm receiving that as you are speaking, it's going to be an entrance. There will be, there will be an, an entrance of light 
that will be the beginning of the spark. So if you can stick that wound and make yourself available, lift your hand, whether it is your children, whoever around you, whether they have a picture, I believe that as I'm speaking that word, Jesus, being released, and it's going to be the beginning of a path, of a path ordained by God. So please. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lord, we present all our brethren, Amen. wherever they are, all over the world. Amen. Thank you. Jesus. We present them before you, that every stronghold yes. that has caged them Amen. from entering into their inheritance, whatsoever it is, Amen. The Bible says, oh, you are the one that pulled down stronghold. You pulled Amen. down imagination. You are the one that pulled down high things. And you bring under obedience every thought. Lord, tonight, whatsoever the enemy has erected, whatsoever image Satan has reigned in the souls of men, in all over the nations of the world, wherever they are, we stand as one, we stand as representatives.